minutes, so you fire away with your questions. I have a fire pit in my backyard that is simply stone on uh, cement blocks, and it has, a, of course, a metal uh, protector inside it. It is not CSA approved. Can I have a fire in it? Have at it. Uh, the truth is that I'm not going to direct you to break the law, but you would be breaking the law because for the last 30 years, according to the regulation that is in place for 30 years, it has to be, and I'm just reading now right from, it has to be a, uh, a wood-burning unit that the unit uh, rests on legs and supports and is placed on, on mineral soil or other uh, types of substrate. So what I'm going to tell you is have at it. Because for the last 30 years, what you've been doing is illegal. I'm going to change the regulation to make sure that that which we have been doing for 30 years is perfectly safe and normal. We'll be able to be not only continue, but will be legal. <laughs> How's that for an answer? Uh, that works for me. Uh, insofar as thir- 300 meters from a wooded area, same question applies. If I've been having a fire pit fire in my backyard, and of course we're talking about people who are doing it safely and, burn- and not yep. burning garbage and stuff. So that reference to the proximity to a wooded area, if a person lives somewhere, wherever, in the city or in rural Newfoundland and has that fire pit like I just described in that region or proximity to the wooded area, has anything changed? Uh, no, because the regulation, there's everything is uh, above board and, and good to go there. So the fire ban is in place with the following exceptions. And these are, it's the actual exceptions which are the guiding, guiding rule here. It says, a person, under exceptions, a person may light a fire on forest land or within 300 meters of forest land without a permit, permit at a public campground or RV or a private campground or RV place on a sand or gravel pit, a sandy beach or a gravel pit or a sandy quarry, uh, or in your backyard if you have an outdoor wood-burning unit. And that's uh, so basically you're good to go. How about it? If uh, we had a call right off the bat, uh, Sam Jesso, a farmer out on the West Coast, talking about the need for agricultural burn-off. We know what the rebirth and the regrowth generation means when people have controlled burns. What about those? He's good to go. Well, he's, if Sam Jesso were burned last year agricultural land, cleared some agricultural land last year during the fire ban season, during the fire season, he would have had to have had a permit, and I'm sure he did. Uh, to be able to do so during the fire season. so And you'll still be able to do that. There are some exemptions where you can still come in. Uh, if you don't meet the exemptions, you can just simply come in to get a permit and you uh, get an authorization uh, to do so. So I'm happy to report that uh, basically what I'm saying to you, Patty, is that that which was always been in place continues to be in place. There are some obvious hypersensitivities because... This is the last bastion of a little bit of peace and quiet that each and every one of us has. Don't take this away from us, for God's sake. Couldn't agree more. And so it really boils down to a question of that which was continues today. Okay, so I guess some of the additional confusion for some would be, why now? If I remember correctly, these fire restrictions come to play around the middle of May, generally speaking. So why now? Uh, last year they came to play May 1st, okay. um, and uh, it's because we've actually had, <laughs> I, uh, I say this when I was talking in cheek, I know the weather hasn't been all that great uh, out in St. John's other than the Avalon, but we've actually had a lot of fires down in the Cadre Valley. We've had some fires, some grass fires in particular, some other areas of the province. Well, we do have to correct. Well, I think we got to make this a little bit more regionally based and supposed to blanket, because Labrador, crazy. You know, we've got Labrador up there, which is still... Uh, you know, maggoty and snow, and 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 they're enjoying every bit of it. And I would wish I were up there too, but uh, the fire ban doesn't belong up there anytime soon. Okay, uh, another caller had concerns with they would clean up around the property. Now we know that we went through a pretty serious storm here this year. My backyard, for instance, is full of all grout, including a lot of branches that broke off the trees in my yard. Uh, that gentleman had a concern that he lives on a big piece of property. He can still have that controlled uh, burning of the grass and the leaves and the branches and stuff, right? I'm just trying to get the specific ones that I can sure. recall from earlier. Right. What I'd, I'd suggest to him is to seek a permit for an exemption if that's uh, that's you know if that's warranted, because but no under the fire ban uh, that would not be a prescribed activity. And I'll say you know basically what I'll say to you is that if you want to burn grass, uh, don't be at it. If you want to tear down your shed and burn your shingles uh, after tearing down your shed, 
don't be at it. If you want to clear a cabin lot and burn all the land, the uh, the tree trimmings after clearing your cabin lot, don't be at it. Why? Not this year. We're in the middle of COVID, COVID-19, and the people who also, we don't only, only need to, to, to protect our forests, we got to protect our first responders. So there is a bit of a heightened ses- sensitivity here because when first responders, either volunteer firefighters or full-time firefighters, firefighters, all of whom are professional firefighters, when they go out on a call, they risk their own lives and they risk injury as a result of the call. They have an added concern, COVID-19. So this is what this is all about, is that uh, we really got to be prudent, up the game here, don't, lower, don't go to the lowest common denominator. There will be restrictions, because at the end of the day, the more often we get our first responders called out, the more risky their situations become. So that's, that would be my answer to you. If you really need to burn, uh, ask for a permit. But beyond that, there will be some restrictions, but it will not be your backyard barbecue That's or your backyard fire pit. And last one, and this is a very basic one, and we do want to make some time with you. We'll aim for next week regarding some aquaculture issues and the fishery and how that's going to look this year. But just for the fire issue so we can get through this today. Yep. In summary, there is no change to the bans that have been in place for the last 30 years. No, this document gonna... today does nothing but to up to, to move up the ban season to now versus when we've seen it in the past. So that's it. Yeah, that that pretty well covers it. Now, this notion about the CSAA, one of the things that we always try to do within the there are every municipality or bigger municipalities uh, have their own bylaws on f- open fires and fire pits, yep. and a lot of them require additional requirements. So sometimes when you see this stuff, it's because the provincial government is trying to marry in with their uh, marry in their regulations with the municipal regulations. Um, so yeah, that's where some of this stuff comes from. To be honest with you, I don't know if there is a CSA approved wood burning unit. I'm not so sure there is. I don't think there is. To be with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we're out of time for this I hope morning. That explains that. Appreciate the clarification. Thank you, Minister Byrne. God love you. Stay safe. Take Thanks. care. Bye bye. Bye bye.